Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is It's a Wonderful World, the expansion Leisure and Decadence by Lucky Duck Games, La Boite de Joux, and Ori Games. This is a one to five player game that involves drafting cards. You'll draft cards, then take those cards, choose to play them and build them, discard them for resources, then gather resources that you are producing from your different empires and attempt to utilize those to build the buildings you've placed down during the draft or right after the draft. Then you're going to hopefully put them onto your empire for more production. More production means more buildings, means you're able to draft and gather more buildings to then include into your empire, which will hopefully score you victory points in a variety of different ways. The base game presents the one to five player experience. It's only 45 minutes or so to play, and that doesn't change with this expansion. It's still about the same amount of time. With the other expansions, we have two other ones. We have War and Peace, which is kind of a legacy campaign game. And then we have this one, Corruption and Ascension, which includes the one to seven player variant. Um, you're going to have a bunch of different varieties of ways to play this game. But with just this and this base game, you're going to be playing this still the one to five player experience, 45 minutes uh, or up, so somewhere around that area. And this is a campaign style game with added cards and additional boosters in the game, which I'll explain in my review. But this game, after you draft, at the end of four rounds, you check to see how, much, how many points you have acquired through building buildings onto your empire. Whoever has the most points, which will be kept with utilizing this score tracker here, is going to be the winner. And then you'll move on to the next campaign. Well, I'll talk about how to set the game up, the basics of how to play, and then finally my review, which will cover as much as I can about the different pieces of content without spoiling too much. So the way you set up the game, it's a wonderful world, with the expansion is actually quite simple. You are going to get a number of cards from this expansion and you will add it to this big stack of cards here. You'll shuffle this deck up and place it down in the middle of the table within reach of all players. Then you'll take the main game board of the game, attach them together because there are two different portions, and place each of the different resource types in their queue. Now I got in trouble before if I'm not mentioning the exact types of resources, so I'll do that now. But afterwards, I'm just gonna call them by their color, gray, black, green, yellow, and blue. Damn, so let me grab this. Materials is gray, energy is blue, or is, is black. Now green is science, gold is the, the yellow, and finally exploration is the blue. So now, now you have all the different types of resources. You'll take those and put them on each of the circles with their indicated color, and then you'll take the round mark place it on the right side and then place it on the number one. So green for one and two, one and three and pink for two and four. Afterwards, you're going to take the extra little pedestals. You're going to have the uh, blue workers and the red workers. And you'll place those tokens on the respective stations. Based on the expansions that you have, you'll place the ones and threes, or just the base game will just be ones. And finally, the red wild markers, these will be placed down on the red track there. Uh, additionally, every additional player board you're not using is going to be set aside and place it just like you see here. Then you're going to go ahead and give every single player an empire or a state, some type of civilization and place that in front of them. There are two different sides you can play. The base game, which is going to have the two gray, black and a green resource, or you can flip them over and they will generate different types of resources and end game benefits. And you can play with this, which is a unique variant on the game. And then lastly, you might or might not be told to add things from the campaign via It's a Wonderful World, Leisure and Decadence, to your board state, along with additional player boards or game boards and resource tokens, etc., etc. Playing the game It's a Wonderful World, the Leisure and Decadence expansion is quite simple. After you set up the main base game, you're then going to go ahead and take the first envelope from the main game It's a Wonderful World expansion, and you're going to open it up. You will also include, based on the rules, any cards you need to include into the main game deck. This expansion booklet is going to include a portion of the campaign you're playing, and you're actually gonna go ahead and take a look at what's inside, which is typically going to be one of these guys here, the secret box, and it will institute what you're going to be adding in the game, whether it be a single card that you guys have, or whether it be a full on portion of the game that gets added to the main base game. Once whatever it is that it tells you to add is added, and in this case here, I have this culture board here with the culture tokens, the markers, and the multipliers, and then you're going to simply set the game up and play it as normal. And the base setup is pretty simple. Each player is going to get seven cards. Once each player has their seven cards, they're going to look at the seven cards they have been given. They'll choose one and then they will pass it to their left. And the same will be said for each and every other player as well. 
Uh, they'll be choosing one and passing the deck over to their left. And you'll keep doing that in that way until you get seven cards into your hand. So there's a bit of a draft involved. Each round is different. In the first round, you're going to be going clockwise. You'll flip this over for the second round. You'll go counterclockwise for the draft and so on and so forth. After your draft is done, you're then going to set out any number of cards you'd like from your hand to be played. These are going to be the cards that you're going to add to your city. The rest of the cards that you do not want, you can actually go ahead and recycle. And on the bottom right hand corner is not only the symbol of what the card is, but also the type of resource the card gives you when you choose to discard the card. And in this case, I have a yellow, I have a black and a green. So I would go ahead and discard these guys and take a yellow and take a black and take a green. Any resources you gain on your turn is gonna go next to your empire. Not on it, but next to it. And after you have gained all your resources from the recycled cards and placed any of the cards you want face up on your tableau to be built, everybody else does the same, you'll move on to production. And production is going to work fairly simply. The first thing you do is you'll check each of the different types of production resources. You'll say, gray, how many does everybody have? And if it is a tie, nothing happens. If one person is higher than any other player, you'll get a bonus, and the bonus is on top of each of the production circles, indicating one of the two different characters, the blue male or the red slash orange female. And you will gain the bonus token associated, plus the resources that you have. So in this case here, at the very beginning of the first round, you're gonna get two gray, a black, and a green, and everyone will, which means that there are all going to be ties and no bonuses will be distributed. However, if you're playing with the backside, each player is playing with the backside, you will get unique resources, which will give you specific bonuses in that is going to be based on the different tops of these guys here. But in this case, you would just take your browns, your black, and your green. And now you've got all your recycled resources plus the ones that you've produced. And you'll be building. You'll take these resources and you'll place them on the buildings that I'll have the occupied top left hand corner of the colored circle or squares that resemble the resources. And you'll try and fill them in as best as possible. Any resources that you have left over that cannot be placed or you do not want to place are gonna go onto your location, your colony, your empire, your state, and these can be transferred for five to one into a wild resource. If you don't have enough, you'll simply leave them there from round to round. Any buildings that you build by utilizing all the resources needed are going to discard the resources and take the building and place it on the top right hand side of your main empire. And when you do that, that will generate new resource production for the next round. The rest of them that are not built will stay there. After you have built all of these guys here, everybody's done, you'll once again flip over the round tracker and move to the next round, dealing out seven cards to each player and thusly creating a new draft checking to see if you want to keep cards or discard them for their resource value, their, their, their recycling value. And then each resource will be examined once again to see if you have obtained any new resources and if you have the most in any category to gain the bonuses. Then gain those resources, place them once again on any of your newly placed locations or old ones, fill them up, and when you do, build them, place them on top of your location. At the end of the fourth round, you'll check to see who has the most points. And the way you'll check is on the very bottom uh, left of every card is gonna be either multipliers or points. These multipliers can give you additional points uh, in, in perpetuity for each of the different tokens you have. So a multiplier of one for your blue male is gonna give you a times two bonus because you start with one and then you add one for each of your tokens, which are all worth one. And the same is said for these guys as well. Some of them are going to give you multipliers for the different cards or different card types that you have. Uh, and others are just going to give you simply basic victory points on the top the bottom left area here. But you just add them up. And if you have the previous expansion, which is your uh, corruption and ascension, you'll use this with the marker here. If you do not have this, then the base game for It's a Wonderful World is going to give you this tr track here, this pad that will allow you to track your points on here. But either way, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. And that would conclude the first portion of the campaign for Leisure and Decadence. In which case, you would then go ahead and open up the next portion and do what it says. 
and you'll see that it'll go from secret box number one to secret box uh, number two. And then maybe there's another secret box number two, and you'll progressively add new things to your game board here, whether it be different locations, whether it be new ways to score, additional cards, separate cards. There's a wide variety of different things that can be added to this game. And if you have played the base War and Peace and of course the other expansion, then this is kind of a little bit of all that. But either way, that's how you play the game. Let me tell you about my review for this specific expansion and how it combined with the other ones. At its core, It's a Wonderful World is a wonderful draft experience. It's very simple and straightforward. Taking cards that you draft, placing them down to build, removing them as resources, gaining resources from your production from previously built cards, and of course your empire slash civilization, and utilizing them to build more. Build, 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 build. At the end of the last round, you'll check to see your score, and whoever has the most is the winner. It's relatively straightforward, pretty simple, but elegant as well. For the main base game, people may or may not enjoy the game based on there is a little bit of luck involved in not only the player count, but the type of cards that get drafted. You might not get the right cards you want, your starting hand might not be so great, and things can change based on different scenarios that you are playing. Uh, but regardless, when you start adding the expansions in, you start experiencing a new wonderful world. Whether you're playing World in Peace or Corruption and Ascension, Corruption and Ascension being the six to seven player additional variant with a new set of cards that implements in a unique way to build even stronger monuments slash buildings, or there'd be War and Peace, a light, um, I would say kind of legacy-like campaign game where you start to add new things to the game, or finally now, Leisure and Decadence. This is going to be a kind of a combination between War and Peace and the Ascension and Corruption in the fact that you add more cards, you're going to get more booster packs, uh, you're going to be adding new elements of gameplay, and you're still also going to get the legacy experience of playing from one campaign to the next with different things that happen. Whether it be adding a singular card, then instead of allowing you to remove five resources to build a wild, now you can actually use one of each resource to give you additional bonuses at the uh, throughout the game and during certain portions of the game, whether it be bonuses to your characters that you get, moving on certain tracks, or the ability to do different types of actions. Other portions of the expansion might involve the culture track, where you're going to be able to gain culture, thusly allowing you to gain multipliers and additional culture tokens, or simply gaining those culture tokens. And culture will range in variety as to how important it is from scenario to scenario, making it feel like there's a bit of a mini game in each of the different modules. You might be just playing a small mini game, you might be playing a very large one, or it might be a portion of the game that starts to be included in the base game itself. Not only to note, but also there's different portions of mechanics to the game. You might be experiencing a little bit of worker placement as well when it comes to It's a Wonderful World with the Leisure and Decadence expansion, where you start to use workers on cards that provide you with the resources or allow you to build on certain tiles, where normally you can build anywhere you want, now you have some rules and regulations. But there's a benefit because they can start generating you more powerful resources. Now, I don't want to discuss too much of what you're going to be getting in the game because I feel like if I do that, you're going to lose the cool aspect of seeing what happens next. But I feel at the same time, because most of this is hidden, you want to know at least what you could expect in the game. You might also expect, based on how you win or lose, new cards that will give you abilities throughout the rest of the campaign. It might be allowing you to discard cards to thusly draw new ones at any point during the draft. It might also allow you to draw extra cards during the draft that you can then utilize compared to other players. Maybe it gives you additional resources or allows for a different type of trade. It really just depends on how well you do or how poorly you do. And of course, there is a wide variety of things that you'll get in the game as you progress through it that will allow you to kind of change and mix things up. And all of these cards can be given out, but it's only going to play up to the five players. Here's one that gives culture, or here's one that's going to give you uh, extra value when you build certain types of buildings that produce certain types of things. Now, I've played probably about six or seven of this, and there's still more to go. And at the end, there's also going to be booster packs that will be provided to you to increase your play experience, because while this looks like a large deck, when you're playing five to seven players, this will at least go halfway for each of the different game modes that you play, which is super cool. And the fact that you're always going to see new cards and new combinations, and each time you go into a new expansion, you'll be receiving new additional things that you can do. Now you can keep track of whether it be culture, or maybe you're trying to score points based on multipliers of the different characters. 
focusing on your buildings and scoring additional points for each type of building that you're building. And you can go in different routes. Maybe you want to go a science slash gold route or like a entertainment route. Or maybe you're going to go for the oil and the like production value materials that will thusly allow you to start building cultural locations that will give you points in that way. And there's always going to be a mix and match. And each of the different scenarios provides for the new expansion a unique way to play. So you're not going to be playing this game each and every time the same way with the same strategy when you're going through the campaign because the campaign is going to provide you with new and interesting choices as well as a new and interesting way to score. So a seasoned player going with a player who's only played a few times will have the same opportunity to win because the game has now mixed it up to change how the strategy can work in the game. So for those of you who are fans of the base game and how it is played, this is going to definitely mix it up. This that you may or may not like, or obviously the same will be said for how the game plays and what you're doing in the game and the same actions will be taking place. But each of the different modules mixes it up to the point where scoring and how you choose to build makes a big difference. And when you choose to use the cards that you get provided to you, for campaign to campaign, and you get to keep them as well. It's a nice little legacy experience mixed with a draft game that I've never seen before. This has all the same variants of like dungeon draft and whatnot, where you are basically just drafting cards to get new cards, to draft new cards, to get new cards. But the added bonuses that get provided with you are wonderful and change the game up tremendously. And each game is still quick. No matter what type of mode you are playing, the game flows fast, it's easy to understand. And if you once you get the base, you go to the next module, it's just one little rule you need to add or change, which makes a huge difference, but doesn't confuse the rules all that much. For me, I love the base game. It's a wonderful world. I could play this game forever. It includes a ton of unique possibilities and it plays a solo mode. Adding in the war and peace and leisure and decadence provides those unique type of campaigns that not only add cards to the game, but also unique surprises and different ways to play the game. And then the wonderful Ascension game um, that is going to allow you to get more players into the game. It adds unique set of cards and all of them provide booster packs it just does a whole lot i really personally love this one the most compared to the other two expansions but sadly it doesn't play up to seven players and there's no seven player expansion so i would always suggest to get that bonus one if you have that larger player group but if you just got that like three to five player base, then definitely this is the one I would suggest between all of them because it provides more of that wonderful campaign element and with a little twist on the other expansion because it adds new base game elements. Yes, It's a Wonderful World is still a top game in my opinion and I really, really enjoy it. Do you need any of these expansions to have fun with this game? Absolutely not. But if you want to mix it up more and change how you play the game, then these are the way to go. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game. It's a Wonderful World, the expansion Leisure and Decadence. If you're interested in picking up this game or any of the other lovely expansions, you can check the link down below in the description where you can go ahead and get it. You can also go ahead and, if we've earned it, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, the bell button notification. We do greatly appreciate it. If you watch more than one or two of our videos, maybe it's that we've earned it. Maybe you're enjoying our content and just pushing the button will help me and make me feel like, oh, okay, I'll make another one. <laughs> you can also check our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, multi-streaming, and on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Whatnot, where we sell games. Uh, thank you guys so much, as always, and I look forward to building a wonderful world with you next time.